Previously on The Bill. People have a right to know they have a child killer in their midst. Backup's here, Leslie. But what if the bloke who came into the station really is Gabriel Kemp? Leslie? Mr. Riley, sir. Good. Let's get Mrs. Stimson back to San Hill as soon as possible. Excuse me. Get out of the way. Why are you protecting her? We'll discuss this at the station, Mrs. Stimson. She did it. She killed my child. Why are you acting as if she's the victim? Go. Go. I've just got to go and get a new battery. I'll be a minute. Sure. Um, PC Kent, you've got a minute. Have you told her yet? No. It's not exactly the easiest news to break, is it? No, I can see how telling your fiancé that you've been living under your brother's identity for the last couple of years might be a little tricky. I'm going to tell her, all right? I just need to find the right time. No more excuses, Gabriel. You tell her, or I'll do it. Oh, our, uh, our mystery gunshot victim, how is he? He's the same. Critical. Yeah. The sooner we find out who he is, the better. Laura, have you got a minute? That's your side, we're on a shout. I'll be there in a minute. I'll be wait. Is it all right? Yeah, fine. It's just that June was asking me about that bloke in the hospital, you know how he's doing. And I felt like I should tell her. Well, do we? We can't, and not until we know for sure that we're right. So after work, we'll meet. Work, we'll meet up, we'll do some digging. If he turns out to be the real Gabriel Kent, then who have we been working with for the last two years? Yeah. Locals will be enraged by the revelation that Sunhill police are sheltering brutal child killer Kath Wilson. A great cost to the taxpayer. It goes on. I'm surprised the tabloids haven't been whipping it up. Let's hope we find her before that. Kath Wilson, convicted in 1985 along with her partner Stuart Jensen for the brutal murder of a 10-year-old child, Robert Kelly. Another local child went missing just before Robert. Her body was never found. On being paroled, Kath Wilson was given a new identity, Leslie Palmer, and placed in our protection. She's now disappeared. D.S. Nixon. Sir. Uniform have been checking CCTV footage in Goddard Street where we know she was dropped off in a minicab. We're seeing if we can pick up a trail. We've been through a list of phone calls made from the house. See if any of those numbers will lead us to her. No joy. Are we checking with Burnwood Prison? Any regular visitors she may have had? What about inmates that she used to associate with that have recently been released? You do that, Chris. Sure. What about Fee, the woman who gave her up to the press? Fee's boyfriend, Pete Manning, has forms. So we've got an address. Uniform have been round there, no one home, but I tell you what, Fee will go back, she's got nowhere else to go. Okay, get round there. But be discreet. This is all the embarrassment that Sunhill needs. Let's find her before the tabloids do. Uh, could you stay there, love? Okay. Mm -hmm. Neighbour noticed the door wasn't properly closed yesterday, and it was still ajar this morning. She hadn't been in, so uh, nothing's been touched. Shall I check through there? Mm. Hello? Police? Are you all right? Can you come in here? Dead. Some sort of inhaler. Maybe an asthma attack? Who knows? 
I'll call the duty officer and get the forensic medic down here. Sierra Oscar from 888, we found a dead body at the Waverley Flats, 27 Humber Street, over. Right, Sergeant. Terran. Didn't expect to see you in. You sure you're up to being here so soon after the... Uh... Thanks for reminding me. No place I'd rather be. We just got a message that the uniform might have something for us. Yeah, an unexplained death's just coming, Chief. The deceased is a Richard Neiman. 30-something, found naked in his bed. Is there any sign of a struggle? Marks on the body? No, the medical examiner's first thought was death by natural causes, an asthma attack. But, to be sure, they sent the body off for special post-mortem. So why don't we wait for that? And why did you inspect one CID involved? Because apparently, it was called in as a burglary. <laughs> and the bloke's wife's just come into the station, so the inspector would like you to talk to her. It's all yours, boys. I remember that. <laughs> you do that. All right, Sarge. <laughs> is in trouble, Fee. You sold your old mate up the swan. You must know you compromised her safety. Yeah, well, she's got you to look after her. She's disappeared, Fee. We need your help to find her. Please. So you're not based in London, Mrs. Newman? Uh, no, we live in Essex. This uh, constable came round and my son, Jonathan, told them to go to the church. I was doing the flowers and... A drink. You sure you're okay to go on? We believe that your husband passed away in the early hours of the morning. When was the last time you spoke to him? Um, two nights ago. He phoned me on his mobile. He's a marketing executive in computers. Did he have any medical conditions that we should know about? Asthma, but otherwise he was very fit. When was he found? Where? They mentioned this flat. In Humber Street. Does that ring any bells? No, when he comes to London he always stays in a hotel. Could it be a friend's place, maybe? I'd know if Richard had a friend down here. We're a very close family. Are you sure this is my husband? We found membership and credit cards in the flat. Yes, but maybe someone stormed Richard's wallet. You do hear about these things. We've organised a formal identification, but on first look. Dear God, I can't believe this is happening. Was she friendly with any other inmates at Burn Wood? I don't know. No. Come on, Fee. Leslie needed you. Relied on you as a friend. Now she's out there being hounded by a mob. Look, Kath will be fine. She can take care of herself. Be. Tell me what you know. Where could she have gone? There's only one place I can think of. To Stuart. Stuart? Yes, yeah, Stuart Jensen. Killed Robert Kelly together. She hated Stuart. Claimed he fitted her up for the murder. <laughs> she had a funny way of showing it. What do you mean? When Stuart got parole six months before Kath, she kept all the clippings. She's besotted with him, if you ask me. She never got over him. Was she in contact with him when she was inside? Oh, yeah. Letters. I never read them and she kept it quiet, but she sure had this control over her even from miles away. She'd do anything for him. So she only admitted to the murder to get paroled to be with Stuart? <laughs> She's had you over, hasn't she? What's that supposed to mean? Oh, poor old Kath fitted up by Stuart. I don't think so. She's dangerous. And if she has run back to him, we wouldn't like to think what they might get up to. You know, Mrs. Neiman says her old man owns a mobile and a laptop, but I can't find either of them here in the flat. There's no sign of a struggle either. Nothing's been turned over. So if anybody did steal the stuff, maybe they saw the outer door open, 
grabbed the first bit of value they could see and then legged it. What? Well, Chummy's lying dead in there? It's possible. Yeah, a neighbour upstairs told Uniform she saw a stranger, a young girl, leaving the flats around about ten this morning. I mean, it's not much of a description, is it? So, we got stuff gone missing. The council tax bill confirms that Mr Neiman owns the flat, but his wife says that she never knew it existed. Hang on. Pack of four. Maybe he's been playing away, shacked up in her home from home. The neighbour said she'd never seen this girl before. So what, it's a tart turning the trick? Maybe he's into that? Well, maybe he died happy. So what do you want to do? You want to give it to MIT, suspicious death? No, let's wait. See what the post-mortem throws up. If there's anything iffy, then MIT are welcome to it. Okay. Looks like we've got something, sir. Transport police have reported a sighting of Leslie at Cumley Central Station. There's also tapes from the station platform in the booking office. Leslie was seen getting on a train to Euston. Did she buy a ticket? No. OK, thanks, you Sheila. Sir. Right, so she's still in a panic then. Straight on the first train, no ticket. Any more on Stuart Jensen? Do we really think that Fee could be right, that he and Leslie still have some kind of relationship? Yes, Nixon's working on that. Stuart's also been given a new identity and we're still waiting to find out his new location. Sam, any luck on Stuart Jensen? Sir, I managed to speak to his contact officer. He's been living under protection in Birmingham, but he's disappeared. What? He didn't turn up for his probation meeting earlier today. He's not at home and his car's gone. Leslie was seen heading for Euston. Isn't that where trains to Birmingham leave from? Get back on to Stuart Jensen's contact officer. Tell him to search Stuart's house. We're looking for any signs of contact with Leslie. Sir, you know, the more you look at this, the more Fee's warning about these two makes sense. Warning? That maybe Leslie's not as innocent as she claims. And the last time these two got together, one child was killed and another went missing. Hey, Sarge. I just spoke to the company that Neiman works for. They supplied me with a mobile that's missing. It's fitted with GPS. Oh, is it trackable? Within about 50 yards. Now, their records show that it's been used several times lately, all within the same locale in Sun Hill, very close to Neiman's flat. Smart technology. A lot smarter than they ever nicked it. Well, let's go and check it out. Okay. Is this it? Yep, the satellite trace shows that the mobile was last used within 50 yards of this place here. All right, let's have a chat with these girls. You got Neiman's mobile number? I've got it stored in my phone. Ladies, I'm DS Hunter. This is DC Perkins, Sun Hill. Excuse me. Is that your mobile? Yeah, it's mine. And turn it off. Right, I'll call you back. Do you live here? I do. I'm DS Hunter. This is DC Perkins, Sun Hill. Is your phone ringing? What's your name? Mandy. Mandy what? Mandy Thompson. Right, Mandy. You're nicked. Wanna come with me? Oh, PC Bright, you busy? I'm just catching up on some paperwork, but if you've got a diversion, I'll be glad of it. Well, it's not very exciting, but it might be useful. It's CCTV from the front office. I haven't had a chance to look through it yet, but it should show our gunshot victim coming into the front of the building before the siege took place. I mean, nobody's come forward to identify him yet. We need a photograph. Right. Just look through that, see if you can get a decent image for me, all right? Uh, Sarge, um, is it to be distributed amongst the whole relief? Oh, more than that, I think. The superintendent's looking to release it to the national press. I mean, somebody out there must know who he is. Right. There's no Mandy Thompson in the system, but Mandy Belshaw, a girl fitting your description, was reported missing last year. Your mum and dad are worried, Mandy. Give them a call, put their minds at rest. It's not my dad. And don't tell them where I am. You won't, will you? No. Not if you don't want us to. Now, you claim that you found this phone. But you didn't, did you? You nicked it from the flat on Humber Street. No. I don't even know Humber Street. Well, someone saw you there, because they gave us a description. OK, OK, it was me. Look, I seen the door was open. I looked in and the phone was just there. What else? Come on, Mandy, we haven't got all day. There was a laptop. I checked that as well. So did you work with someone else? No, I was on my own. Did you go in the bedroom? No. 
You know we can get the fingerprints off the door handle, don't you? So? So, there was a man in the bedroom. He owned that mobile phone and he's dead. Now we're looking into how he died. Do you know anything about it? No, I swear. Look, I looked in, I seen there was a guy there, but I thought he was asleep or blitzed or something. I just pulled the door to it and I was out of there. What time was this? This morning. Oh, about half ten or something. Where were you this morning between midnight and 6am? At a mate's party. In Tottenham. I never had money for a cab, so I had to wait for the tube. I've got the ticket somewhere. How'd you make your money? This and that. So you weren't in the bedroom with that man when he died doing some business? You're in the trade, aren't you, Mandy? Sometimes, yeah. So would you work for yourself? Or is someone pimping you? No, look, I nicked the stuff, but I never went in the bedroom. I just looked in there. Honest, I swear it. Sarge! We've got to talk. What about? Sergeant Ackland's given me this. It's CCTV of the bloke we think might be her son entering the front office. She's asked me to look through it, see if I can lift an image. Superintendent wants to issue a photo in the hope somebody might recognise him. Okay. Well, has she ever met him? I mean, would she know him? I don't know. Well, we've got to show her this first, see if she does. Well, what if we're wrong? What if this bloke just turns out to be a nutter? Well, then we say we're sorry, we've made a mistake. But we're not even supposed to know that she's got a son. This could open a whole can of worms that could have stayed shut. Yeah, well, maybe. But if that bloke's him, lying in hospital, if he's the real Gabriel Kent, that's no way to find out your son might be dying from a photo in a press release. Look, we've got to tell her. And if we're wrong, face the consequences. Okay. Now, do you think we should show this CCTV and see if she does recognise him? No. Look, if we're going to do this, then we're going to do it properly. We're going to leave nothing to chance. Custody Sergeant, explain the terms of your bow, yeah? Just have to sharpen call. Who's that? My boyfriend. Get here. What have you been up to now? You think I've got no better to do with my life than come down here? Ow. Get on your every time. Any luck with the CCTV? Did you get an image? Is there a problem? It's a, it's a bit tricky, this, Jen. It's about the bloke that we can't identify. Yeah? What about him? He came into the Nick before the siege and he spoke to Laura. Mm -hmm. I was covering the front desk, Sarge. He has to speak to you. Me? He said his name was Gabriel Kent. I uh, mentioned it to PC Kent. He said he'd have a word with him. He knew who he was. He was some sort of local nutter. I know that you've got a son. It's not common knowledge. But I do know that he was adopted and that his name is... Gabriel Kent. You see, up until now, I thought it was the Gabriel Kent that, that, that we all know that we work with. No, the man you've been working with is not Gabriel Kent. He is not my son. Would you recognise me if you saw him? What did he look like? Um, he was about five foot ten, dark hair, thinning on top, late thirties. He seemed pretty genuine to me. And he asked for me by name. And Gabriel definitely talked to him. Yeah, they were together for a while, well, at least ten minutes. I've got to see him. How long have Leslie and Stuart been communicating? Local uniform have found letters in Stuart's house written by Leslie over the last seven months or so. They must have used code when they're inside to exchange contact details. These emails came over the last week since Leslie was released. Right, what do they give us? Well, it's long, rambling stuff, saying it was her fault, apologising. Oh yeah, what for? For provoking him into killing the child, Robert Kelly. 
Apparently, Jensen resented her relationship with the boy. And what's Stuart's response? Wary at first, then he opens up, gets affectionate, and they talk about meeting up. Where? Well, it doesn't say, but they do mention somewhere called the Jackson's Place. Could be a family they knew, or somewhere they used to go. Mm -hmm. So wh where did they both live when the killings took place? Maxton, Oxfordshire. Okay, so this Jackson's place could be somewhere in Oxfordshire. Mm, I've run an internet search, nothing. Oh. Can't believe it, she's fed me a pack of lies. She said all she was guilty of was falling for the wrong man and all the time she was writing this stuff to him. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe these emails aren't what they seem. What if she's conning Stuart? Telling him what he wants to hear the way she did with you. Well, considering she's been protesting her innocence for the past 20 years, these emails do suggest quite a sharp U-turn. What do you think she's doing? Trying to set a trap for him? Is there any indication when they plan to meet? No. So let's find the Jacksons' place, because if they are planning to meet up, we need to find them fast. <laughs> Is she right? Do you know her? No. So you're asking 595? Go ahead. Yeah, ambulance please. Got a woman with head injuries. Eily walk, the waste ground. All the is over. Terry. Hey. Any news on the Neiman post-mortem yet? Not that I know, but listen, I've just had a call. Apparently Mandy Belshaw's in hospital. It looks like a salt. She's found at the caravan where she lives. Who was sorted her? Not known. A woman said she saw Mandy arguing with the geezer. Later on, she went back to check on her and found her unconscious. PC Stamp said he saw a bloke feeling seen on a bike. Did you get an index? Oh, yeah. Belongs to a Cole Bailey. I pulled these details up from Crimin. His picture matches the description given by the witness. He's the bloke that picked Mandy up earlier. Oh, is he now? Well, you're going to love this. This geezer's got form for living off a moral earnings. It looks like she lives with him. It's his address. So do you think Cole Bailey's pimping for Mandy? Well, odds on he is, yeah. But proving it's going to be tricky, right? If it's him that's assaulted her, we'll get him for that first. Carl Bailey. DC Perkins, DS Hunter, Sunny or CID. Didn't think we were going to find you here. I live here. With Mandy Belshaw. He just happens to be lying in hospital right now. Carl, a man matching your description was seen arguing with her here earlier. Yeah. That was me. So what? She was drinking, getting lady. Did you assault her, Carl? I never laid a finger on her. We had a row, I left. When I got back, PC Plod was here. So you drove off? I thought the stupid kid had gotten into more trouble. I didn't want to deal with it. Is that a crime? No, but assault is. Let's just go and talk about this a bit more at the station. I gave him away so he could have a better life. He comes back, he comes to find me, and it was. I can't believe this. I was at work half an hour ago. I was doing my job, doing, doing the job I've been doing for the last 20 odd years without him in my life. And now suddenly I'm a mum again. My son could be dying in there. I don't know if I can deal with this, Smithy. You don't even know if it's him yet. And if it is, well... Look, I can't even begin to imagine how you're gonna feel. But I do know you, Jim. And I think you'll just wanna be there for him. And that's all that matters. Mm -hmm.
I was uh, just 16 when I had him. It was the hardest thing, giving him up. I only uh, met him once after that. I didn't know who I was. I was going to tell him, but I mean, you know, he got his own life. He got a wife and kids. He didn't want me coming in and ruining everything. Well, it doesn't look like he felt the same. I mean, he came in looking for you, didn't he? Yeah. So, PC Kent, is he using his identity? <sighs> the couple who adopted my son, they already had a child of their own called David. The man we know in Sun Hill is actually David Kent. Right. He harboured a huge resentment against my son. And when Gabriel went to America, David stole his identity, his qualifications, everything, and he joined the Met as Gabriel Kent. And you knew about that? Oh, eventually, yeah. Look, look, I know, believe me, it was the biggest mistake of my life, but it's time to put an end to that now. Well, if this comes out that you knew what Gabriel, uh, what David had been up to, then you're going to lose your job. I don't care. I mean, after all the things that David Kent has done, they're coming to Sun Hill, finding me. I mean, he's the reason my son is lying in that hospital bed now. I hate him and I hate what he's done. Right, OK. But let's just have a little think of how we could play this before we go rushing in. Yeah. If we can identify your son without your involvement, then we stand a really good chance of exposing PC Kent's lies. Well, we June, he has ruined enough lives already. I don't want him to ruin yours as well. Any more on the Jackson reference we found? No, the search at Jensen's house hasn't turned anything up and I can't find anything relevant in this stuff at Leslie's either. Have we got the case papers from the original inquiry into Kath Wilson and Stuart Jensen yet? It's going to take several days, sir. And the officer who ran the inquiry? Retired and in Spain. And nothing on the search for Stuart Jensen in Birmingham either? Afraid not. Sir, is Marie Stimson still with us? Yeah, I'm hanging on to her as long as the press are doorstepping the station. So how do you know Mandy, Carl? Met her a year ago at King's Cross. She jumped the intercity down from Glasgow. She was sleeping rough, she tapped me up for a couple of quid, so I helped her out. What, join the Samaritans, have you, Carl? Or are you just at it again? Not with you. For the benefit of the tape, DC Perkins has left the room. Well, you got nice levers, nice bike. All a bit pricey, isn't it? What's that got to do with you? Well, you see, I was just wondering where you got your money from. Where'd you work? I'm between jobs at the moment. I do a bit of this, a bit of that. And a bit of the other, perhaps. Or you got Mandy doing that for you. You're pimping her, ain't you? Did you pick her up off the street like you did all the other girls you got working for you? No. Me and Mandy are... partners. True love, is it? Yeah, if you like. Look, you've got nothing on me. Where were you between the hours of midnight and six o'clock yesterday morning? Yesterday, I was at a party with Mandy in Tottenham. We were wasted. It was an all-nighter. Ask her, she'll tell you. Oh, and uh, there were a lot of other witnesses there and all. Sarge, move away. Interview suspended at 17.31. Mandy's telling the doctor she wasn't assaulted, she fell. Mm. Of course she is, she's scared. No, it's not just her. The doctors are saying she took a load of drink and painkillers and her injuries are consistent with falling and she passed out. Look, if she's trying to commit suicide, sorry, it's not right. And I know Bailey's behind it. What are you going to do? Let the brief know we're going to make further inquiries. I'm not going to let them off the hook that easy. Cool.
If you're not charging me, why am I still here? Criminal damage is a very serious offence, Mrs. Stimson. So is murder. But Kath Wilson's free. You know, I can't even pretend to understand how you must feel. But we have to do our job. Now, you knew Catherine Maxton. You still live there, don't you? Can you look at these for me, please? Now, do any of those photos have anything to do with the word Jackson? Jackson? No. You were neighbours with Kath and Stuart back then. Was there anyone called Jackson that they were friendly with or, or who lived in the area? Not that I know of. Is there something there? I know this place. It was a, a cafe. Yeah, I'm sure the bloke who ran it for a time was called Jackson. Yeah. What's this about? Where exactly is this cafe, Marie? Maxton Park. I think I've found Jackson, sir. It's an old cafe in a park near Leslie and Stewart's old stomping ground, about an hour and a half up the motorway. Good work. Should we give it to local police, get them to chase it? No. The more people who know we've lost Leslie, the greater the danger of another leak. We don't want the press up there crawling all over this. We could just inform the locals we're going onto their patch, get them to hang fire till we get there. Brief DS Nixon, get yourselves up there, see what you can find. I'll tell Stuart Jensen's contact officer what's happening. Yeah. Sir? We turned anything up on Bailey yet? I've just been going through his bank deals. I'm trying to find out where his money's coming from. Look, check this out. He's paid over two grand in cash for a motorbike at Ricochet Bikes. Well, he must be raking it. Hang on. Newman's fine. You know you said Mandy used it a few times. Yeah, but there's no voice or text messages left on it. Yeah, but if Carl Bailey's pimping her, he's not going to be on the pavement, is he? He's going to be on his mobile. If she's called him to do some business, then maybe there's something on his phone. Well, he had his phone on him when we brought him in, so the custody sergeant will still have it. Let's get it. Sarge, CSM sent through the post-mortem results on Richard Neiman's death. It wasn't natural causes. So what was it then? Suffocation. On closer look, they found bruising on his arms consistent with being held down forcibly. There's no sign of sexual activity and no DNA found when he was held down. Are they still sticking to the estimated time of death? Yeah. Narrowed it down a bit between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. yesterday morning. Yeah, but that puts Carl and Mandy definitely in the clear. Their joint alibi holds up. They were at a party. Well, I'll have to hand it over to MIT, let them chew on it. But in the meantime, check Bailey's phone, see if we can wipe that smug grin off his face. Right. Stuart's contact officer said his car is a red hatchback. No sign of it here, then? No. So where's this cafe Mr. Jackson owned then? I don't know. You check alongside the canal and I'll have a look up this way. Okay. Are you okay? Well, I should control myself for the last couple of years. I'm sure I can cope now. Sarge? Sergeant Smith? Is Sergeant Anton okay? She seems a bit upset. No, she's fine. Better get that in the property store, eh? Sarge. Yep, I think I see it. North side of the park. That was Mandy calling you, Carl. Could have been. Calling you about doing a punter, doing business for 30 quid. No. No, you see, uh, Mandy does a bit of dealing. You know, just a bit of weed. That's what that was there. She's done a punter to deal. Do you expect us to believe that? No, it's the truth. Oh, but you're not interested in that, are you? There's other messages on your phone. All girls talking deals. I got a lot of female friends. Is that a crime? We're well, all dealing drugs and all calling you to tell you about it. Why don't you ask them? If you've got the names. If not, you can talk to my solicitor. Drop the 
knife. Oh, John! Uh, you made it! Uh, I was hoping you would have... Leslie, listen to me! He's bleeding! Let him go. I don't care. Oh. He didn't care about those kids. Stay you are, John! Look at him. I loved him. He's a dumb! I worshipped him. Sarge, they're at the cafe. We need backup right now. Help me, Leslie, think about what you're doing. Don't throw everything away. Everything? I've got nothing. He saw to that. I don't give a damn about me anymore. I'm only here for Mark Stimpson. You killed him. No, I didn't. You no, killed him! Twenty years because of you. Let me rot in prison for something I didn't do. Year after year, every day being reminded of those little boys. You cared more about him than you did about me. You were jealous enough to take their knives. The family that trusted me to look after them! No. Leslie! Please, Joe! I will do it, okay? Mm -hmm. Just put the knife down, okay? I can't. Uh, not until he tells me who Marie Stimson's little boy is. <laughs> Yes, sure. Well, don't you think I've got it in me? This is not you, Leslie. I know that. Doesn't matter anymore, Joe. I've got nothing else left. This is the only thing that's kept me going. Now, for the last time, where is Mark's body? I don't know. Oh, I can tell you. He's, he's down there. In, in the canal. I can tell you exactly. Yeah, please, let me go. It's all right. It's OK, Leslie. <laughs> he's told us what we needed, Leslie. We'll find Mark now. Don't let him turn you into a murderer now. Put the knife down. Holding Carl. We know he's been pimping. You're not the only girl that's running. Did you know that? No comment. You wanted out of it, didn't you? That's why you took the overdose. We need you to confirm that he's been working here. <laughs> I can't. Come on, Mandy. You help us. We can get him off your back. You used the mobile phone you stole to call Carl. We know that. Because we've got his mobile phone. He left a message. You recognise the phone? Do you want to listen to the message? No. Carl sets up tricks with blokes on the phone. He does the deals and up. All right, take your time. I tried to get out. I make that stuff to sell from that flat. Get the money that way. Just so I wouldn't have to work. I 
thought it would keep him quiet for a couple of nights at least. God, I hate him. I hate him. All right, Manny. We'll leave it there for now. We've managed to stem Stuart's bleeding, but he will still need surgery. Without an anaesthetic, I hope. The local police are here to take to the station. You got kids, Joe? Uh, no. I always wanted to be a mum. So I started babysitting Mark. I thought if we had a little one round ours, or maybe Stuart would warm to the idea of having a kid of our own. We just got more moody, more possessive. Do you think we'll find Mark's body where Stuart said it was? He wasn't lying. I know him. All these years, Marie kept writing to me, begging to know where Mark was buried. The only reason I said I was guilty was that I could get released and get the truth out of Stuart. It's the one thing I could do. The only scrap of comfort I could give her. There's a team of divers on the way. They'll trawl the canal and I'll let you know if you find him. This is really going to make my day. Finish messing me about then, have you? Yeah. I told you we were going to have to let me go. Yeah, I remember. Carl Bailey, Sarge. We thought we had him for assault. The charge is living off of moral earnings. It's pimping to you. You what? Well, Carl, it seems that Mandy's fallen out of love with you. I can't seem to think why. So you better take that coat off, shut your mouth, and listen to what he's got to say to you. Right, Mr Bailey. Let's do this again. Anything? No. Mrs. Stimson. We've received some information as to the possible whereabouts of the body of your missing son. What? Where is he? Nothing has been confirmed, so I don't want to raise your hopes. Tell me where. We think somewhere in Maxton. An operation has been authorised, and you will be the first to know the outcome, I promise. In the meantime, you're going to be released, without charge. And we'll arrange for you to be taken home. Where's this information come from? Did it come from her? I'm sorry, I can't say anymore. Please. Oh, and Mrs. Stimson, I'm very sorry. We found a body. It was in the canal. He put him in a trunk. Well, I say him. We're waiting for confirmation, but it's probably Mark Stimson. Does Marie know? Yep. You were going to make a new start, Leslie. Sorry it's ended like this. I'm not Leslie. I'm Kath Wilson. So I'll always be. Well, at least now people will know you're not a child killer.
Thanks, Joe. Okay. Time on the bill. Get on to Terry Perkins. Tell him Lucy's been hurt. You arranged for this to be taken. What have you done? Start talking to me now! Hey! You know, you said Gabriel didn't have any family. His brother is the man who was shot. He's the real Gabriel Kent.